The chapter starts with the continuation of the battle between the Heart and Blackbeard pirates. Blackbeard laughs, saying escape is futile as he prepares another attack. Law changes the Heart pirates' positions. He orders Hakugan to take command of the Polar Tang submarine. Shachi and Penguin follow orders and jump into the sea to give cover. Before Blackbeard can bring down his fist, Law uses R Room Amputate, stronger nays as he's sliced in half, sending Blackbeard flying into the air. Blackbeard wonders in disbelief, is that an awakened technique? He releases a tremor crush from midair, striking down the remaining heart pirates on land. Blackbeard cackles as the intense shockwaves bring them to their knees. Doc Q tumbles in the air too, telling Stronger not to die on him and that he was a good horse. He screams, eat this! as he tosses his basket of explosive apples at the heart pirates who dive for safety. Penguin quickly gulps down seawater and shoots a torrent at the bombs, making them explode in midair. The still-falling Doc Q watches in shock. Shachi yells from the water, don't mess with folks born and raised in a frigid North Blue Port, revealing that the heart pirates will always have the advantage in a sea battle. Just then, Beppo uses his hearing power to warn Jean Bart, Sniper at three o'clock! Bart uses himself as a shield to protect his captain from Van Auger's incoming shot. Auger pulls back his gun exasperated and grumbles that Law has a tough guard. Law uses K-Room, shock will to pierce his sword through Blackbeard's chest, zapping him from the inside out. Blackbeard screeches from the attack. He bleeds and staggers, letting out a cough. Auger, seeing his condition, mutters, This is what happens when you charge in without a plan. He uses his power to warp himself to Blackbeard's position and suggests that they retreat to the ship. Despite Blackbeard's injuries, he barks, No, you fool! and orders Augur to stay on the offensive. Augur warps them both towards Law. Facing each other, Law asks a wheezing Blackbeard, So all of your officers have powers now? He points out that means they all share the same weakness, the sea. Blackbeard retorts, The benefits are worth the risk. That's how the devil fruits work. At this moment, the Polar Tang attacks Blackbeard's ship from below. The Blackbeard pirates panic, recognizing that the Heart Pirates are powerful fighters in the water. Below deck, however, two grunts guarding the prison chat confidently, It'll pass soon! Our Commodore's the greatest! In the cell, we see Charlotte Pudding, who was captured earlier by Kuzan and Augur. She tells them they'll be eating their words if Mama is still alive. The grunts laugh, saying, well, the guy we're fighting now is the guy who killed Big Mom. They tell her the new era can't start until they take down all the old legends. Outside, Blackbeard and Law continue to battle. Their attacks meet each other in a volatile ball of light. Law senses something strange as their eyes meet. Blackbeard unleashes his Black Vortex attack. Back in Marine HQ, Sakazuki receives a report of the battle on Winter Island. He's frustrated by his position as Fleet Admiral yelling, Here I am once again waiting for a fight to conclude. Meanwhile, on Egghead, the Straw Hats and Jewelry Bonnie continue to fight the pacifistas. They notice that they stop attacking after their transformation. Bonnie uses her devil fruit powers to turn Luffy and Chopper into 70-year-old men, while Jinbei and herself become young children. Luffy tells Bonnie that the pacifista only looks like her father, Bartholomew Kuma, and that she has to let him fight it. Chopper scolds him for being cold and apologizes to Bonnie, explaining that the Pacus Fistas bring up bad memories. Jinbei empathizes with Bonnie having to face a clone of her father, but shares what he knows about Kuma. He tells them Kuma started as the wicked king of the Sorbet Kingdom until he was ousted and became a pirate. He later joins the Revolutionary Army until he's captured by the Marines and sentenced to life imprisonment. There, he meets Dr. Vegapunk, who is impressed by his strength. The two make a deal. In exchange for Kuma taking part in body augmentation and clone development, he's granted freedom as one of the warlords of the sea. Jinbei finishes with, Do I have that right? Bonnie breaks her silence and picks up a sword. She understands the warlord and cloning part, but being turned into a cyborg, she yells it's a death sentence. She can't imagine anyone making such a deal. Jinbei admits that's true, but continues that Kuma was already facing a life sentence. He wonders what crimes the tyrant Kuma must have committed when Bonnie erupts with rage. My father was not a tyrant! She strikes at the others, screaming that her father hated the world government and would never work for them. She cries, They experimented on him by force! Luffy is distracted by her laser beam saber attack, exclaiming, That's awesome! 
Bonnie collects herself and replies they must be in one of Vegapunk's scrap heaps. She continues that it's murder in the name of science. She changes the Straw Hats back to their original ages and reveals that Kuma told her he came from a special people. She yells that it doesn't give Vegapunk the right to force experiments on him or kill him. Luffy cheers her on, and Chopper wonders what is meant by special people. The scene shifts to the Thousand Sunny. Lilith and the crew soar into the sky on Vega Force 01. They marvel at the futuristic city below. Lilith chirps, that's correct, and drops them off on Egghead. The island where we build the future. She explains that in the clouds above is Labophase, the main research center, and the rest is known as the Fabriophase. She mentions that Luffy is causing a fuss at the lower level as she ushers them to Labophase. We see Zoro and Brooke decide to guard the ship while the others explore the wonders of the island. Lilith advises Sanji's group to use the Trancos to change clothes before heading into the lab, and they have fun admiring each other's outfits. Inside the lab, Shaka speaks with Monkey D. Dragon. He says the problem with being a genius is he can see into his own future. Dragon asks, What do you mean, Vegapunk? Shaka tells him that he fears his death is imminent. Dragon tells him not to joke about that. The chapter ends with Shaka telling him he just sincerely wants Dragon to know.